Hi, Elliot. Sorry, this was not with you sooner. So there's some very good stuff here. Uh, let me just run through it in order. So we need to say um, a little bit about her. So you need to say Jessica. And then a bit of um, description, sandy hair, uh, in her pajamas, uh, whatever it might be. Um, to, just to give a kind of handle for the person uh, who's looking at the screenplay to think, oh, yeah, that sort of girl, rather than just Jessica. Um, now, I was thinking about this. I, th I think you probably need a montage for this and you need to be cutting to from what she looks like and what's going on in her mind. The one I was thinking about was um, this one from Requiem for a Dream, which you're allowed a tiny amount of stuff that you haven't filmed. Um, I mean, obviously, you can do a montage completely differently, but this is quite um, – you could film an awful lot of this. And anyway, that's the one I was thinking of. If you want to give the impression of her mind in torment, I think that's quite a good uh, starting point. Let's go back. Um, yeah, so all this is fine. Um, that the thing I'm concerned about, and this will be a little bit later on, is it's all got to be. Um, you've got to think quite carefully how you're going to shoot this, um, because it seems to me to tell the story of her in the house. Um, you're going to need to uh, cut quite carefully. And again, so I was thinking camera follows. She's on the phone, yeah, but you know this film. And she's on the phone to uh, the guy who's going to kill her eventually. Do we have the camera following um, Jennifer? Does it, is the camera a presence like this? If it is, then it's kind of puts us in the house with her and it's going to be easier to film than if you're cutting um, in a more complex way, like, let's see some continuity editing. So that would be more standard. You've got the shot, you've got the reverse shot, you've got the continuity to the door and her at the phone. Are we going to be cutting like this? That's something that you need to think about. Anyway, that's a scene worth watching, I think. Okay. Now, with, I, I just can't get out from this. Give, give, Jessica turns on the lights by the upstairs landing. It reveals Michael, her brother, who has blah, 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 blah. And then name Michael. Okay, again, you need to, um, oh, you see you've done it further down. How do we know where he's gone? Can we see that in a kind of flashback or is the flashback what we get at the end when he's on the floor? Um, are we going to see the mum or hear the mum? And where are we going to go? So you've got three pages. This looks like a couple of minutes, two and a half minutes. You've got a couple of minutes more and I think you need to think about a twist at the end. It just it just says to me, okay, we need a kind of uh, we need to surprise the audience at the end. So we need to maybe have a conversation about that. Okay, but it's promising. I like your dialogue. That's very good. I'd just like you to um, give me a bit more uh, color, detail, make 
make it when I'm reading it more like a short story so I know what the house feels like. Um, the voice that we've got there, are we, we sort of need to know, do they come back again, the voices? Do we hear them here? Um, could we have her taking some medication? Um, anyway, those are all questions for you to have a think about. Uh, but it's promising. So look forward to seeing some more.